Featured on Mr. Robot's and even PewDiePie's channel, the bad USB has become the archetypal hacker tool of recent times. They can take many forms, though all bad USBs essentially perform the same task. They may look like generic USB sticks, though secretly they're virtual keyboards. Plug one in and it'll spring to life, getting straight to task. The idea being that keyboard input is inherently trusted. When you download an executable file, your computer doesn't trust it by default. It'll run a few scans to figure out what the program does, but there's a good chance if it's from an unknown developer and has malicious intentions, your computer won't even let you run it. But if someone gained access to your PC, opened up a command prompt, and told your computer to delete all of its files, the PC will just say, OK, and get to work. No time spent trying to figure out if the person behind the keyboard is legit or not. Enter the bad USB. It simply pretends to be a keyboard, so when plugged in, it'll type out whatever you want it to do. The computer is none the wiser. Bad USBs are undetectable. From a computer's perspective, they're just keyboards. Nothing malicious there. They're trusted. Again, it's just a keyboard, so why be so cynical? And they're super fast, typing thousands of characters per minute, they don't stop to chat. They're often used by pen testers to quickly run scripts on target PCs, allowing them to gain a foothold on a target computer system without ever having to touch it, for example by means of a reverse shell. Bad USBs can do pretty much anything on a target PC, there really are no limitations. If the user can do it, so can the bad USB. Even sysadmins have found a use for them. In setting up new computers, for example, why spend an hour tapping through prompts to set up a new PC when you can have a bad USB do it for you in just a few moments? Maltronics.com is where you can find the latest of hacker hardware, from Wi-Fi deauthors to Malduino keystroke injectors, Wi-Fi keyloggers, and USB protectors. It is run by myself, so do give it two minutes of your time. You're guaranteed to like our tech. Maltronics.com, link is in the description. The bad USB's first major incarnation was Hack5's USB rubber ducky. It stemmed from a vulnerability back in 2006 that allowed CD-ROMs to auto-run programs when inserted. This vulnerability made its way into a device known as the USB switchblade. Or as we've called it, you know, the switchblade just because it's got this sweet little uh, slider. Yeah. Right. Which was essentially a USB stick that could auto run any program when plugged in. A separate partition on this uh, on this little USB key here mm -hmm. that looks to Windows like a CD-ROM, which means it will auto, auto run, run because without question. Without Though a new kind of attack was developed by the Hack5 community. This took a generic USB flash drive and reprogrammed the microcontroller such that it could act as a HID device, a keyboard instead of a mass storage drive, allowing it to perform keystroke injection attacks. Unfortunately, however, not many USB flash drives had the right microcontroller, and the fact that manufacturers often update the chips and their internal designs without changing the product's name makes it increasingly hard to find a compatible USB stick these days. So, in 2011, Hack5 launched their USB rubber ducky. This was a USB stick purpose-built to be a bad USB, otherwise known as a keystroke injection device. This frame in their office shows the various USB rubber ducky prototypes and iterations over the years. Along with the USB rubber ducky came ducky script. This super simple scripting language makes it really easy to tell your bad USB what to do. A string command simply tells the duck to type something out. The delay command tells it to wait a bit. You can even do multi-key combinations such as GUIR, which holds down the Windows key at the same time as pressing R, giving you a run prompt. It's pretty obvious to see how this may be used maliciously. The CIA's Vault 7 leaks in early 2017 even discuss how ordinary USB sticks can be weaponized and turned into bad USBs. A Black Hat talk in 2014 propels the bad USB to fame, helping it to earn its place in hacker history and culture. In recent years, I myself have become infatuated with them and made quite a few videos on how you can make a bad USB yourself. Though with a really cheap Arduino development board, instead of shelling out $50 for a USB rubber ducky. Eventually, you guys wanted me to look at making my own version of the bad USB to make available to buy, 
and so I got to work. The idea behind this prototype was that you could store up to 16 different ducky scripts on a micro SD card and switch between them using an onboard set of dip switches. The whole thing ran atop Arduino, and hence I decided to call the final product Malduino. I do have a how it's made video up on them, which I'll link in the description if you're interested. You might have even spotted the Malduino in the ad spots nearer the beginning of this video. Link in the description if you're interested. I've also made a few videos on DIYing an iteration of the bad USB, which comes bundled with wireless capabilities. It's probably a little too tricky for beginners to set up, though it allows you to control the bad USB from afar via a Wi-Fi hotspot, enabling a whole new range of scenarios that it'll work in. There are many other permutations of the bad USB, however. For example, by installing NetHunter on a compatible Android phone, you can turn your mobile phone into a bad USB device. NetHunter is basically a permutation of Kali Linux made to run on phones. Let me know if you want a video on that. Something similar and more advanced can be done with a Raspberry Pi using PwnPi, a free-to-use USB attack platform that I've already made a few videos on recently. Here's a super simple, mostly non-malicious example of Ducky Script just to get the idea across. This script simply presses Alt and F4 together every few minutes, closing whatever window is open. More of a stupid simple prank than anything useful. A short delay at the beginning of the script is often used to allow the bad USB time to be initialized by the target computer, after which it just taps Alt and F4 every few minutes, slowly driving insane the poor soul who happens to be sat at the PC. Now, this does show one downside of Ducky Script in that there are no functions or ways to repeat blocks of code. It's simply executed line by line. Now, this can be remedied by coding a Malduino or using PwnPy's evolution of Ducky Script, which allows for liberal use of JavaScript within a Ducky Script. If you want to learn more about how Ducky Script works and how you can become an expert Ducky Scripter in just five minutes, I'll leave some links in the description. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Need cheap and fast PCBs or even assembly? I've been using PCBWay for two years now and can't recommend them enough. They're currently celebrating their fifth birthday, so have tons of great offers on. PCBWay, link is in the description. So let me know what you think down in those comments. Is there anything bad USB related you want me to talk about? I'm all ears. Make sure to like this video if you liked it, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And as always, stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.